I think Oxford's the kind of place, in my experience, where if you aren't a certain type of person or you don't fit into certain types of stereotypes or you're at a particular college where you aren't the kind of standard applicant, it can be hard to find your people. Hi guys and welcome back to part two of my brutally honest experience at Oxford University. If you're new here, I'm Viola, I studied classics at New College Oxford for four years. In part one I discussed the academics, the tutors, the teaching, the course, all of that kind of stuff and in part two I'll be talking all things social life, nightlife, making friends, clubs, sports and societies and accommodation. So without further ado let's get into the video. On to accommodation. Accommodation is generally provided by your college for X number of years. So before you apply, they'll tell you how many years they provide accommodation for. New College provides accommodation for all years apart from one. It's all college dependent. I lived in college for first year, second year, and fourth year lived out in third year. On the whole, the accommodation was actually really good. College accommodation was, I'll link the videos of my room tours, but first year my room was very small. It was considered out of all the first year rooms the second worst room out of all the rooms and I really liked my room. I made it look really cosy and homely. I decorated it really nicely. I didn't think it was too small. I mean it was smaller than other people's rooms obviously but I didn't have a problem with it. I, I really liked my first year room. Had a nice view of the library and the bell tower. 90% of New College's rooms have ensuite. I didn't have an ensuite but I had a bathroom just outside of my door. I only ended up sharing with one person in my final term of first year. So the first two terms, it was entirely for me. The only thing I'll say about first year is that, well first of all, because I took a gap year, <laughs> I mentioned this in another video, before I was going to Oxford, I called up my college to ask them what bedding I needed to bring. Was my bed going to be a single bed or a double bed? Because some rooms had double beds. They said that they didn't have me down for any accommodation. So I think because I took a gap year, they forgot that I was on the list because I applied before my gap year. Because my name was off the list, I was given a room which was really far away from the other first year's rooms. There was like a big long building which had staircases and all the first year rooms would go off those. And then just past that, there was one big house. But after that, there were like two cottages and I was put in one of the cottages with only two other first year students and a couple of international students, students who were only coming for one term who kind of kept themselves to themselves. So in my year, there was only two other people in my cottage and we didn't really talk that much. I spoke to the girl who lived below me because she was my college sister, but it was kind of really far removed from the rest of the first years and I didn't like that because I definitely think I missed out socially. Typically in first year, in new college, everyone kind of is friendly on everyone's staircase. Like you'll be friends with your neighbour and you'll do things with your staircase and I didn't have that. I kind of missed out on that. In my second year, because the way the ballot works at new college is that they rank your rooms. Mine was ranked second worst. In second year, they then flip the ballots so I got the second best room in college for second year and I had an entire suite. I had a big massive living room, I had an ensuite bathroom and then I had a room with a double bed in it and it was amazing. I absolutely loved my room in second year. I basically lived in my second year room. I never really left to go to the library because I'd just work in my living room with the big desk. Yeah, I, I loved my second year room. It was amazing. It was very central in college, right in the middle with the other people who had suites. Fourth year accommodation in college was also pretty decent. I was only there for one term because of coronavirus. First term I was obviously in Rome so I wasn't in college accommodation. Second term I came back and I lived in college and then had to go home because of coronavirus so yeah the accommodation was fine they're all en suite in your fourth year and you share a kitchen so it's like a little flat with about six people and you share a kitchen and you have each have an en suite and it's only single beds but that's again fine get a big desk quite light with a big window i liked my room was a bit small but at the end of the day it didn't really matter i was mainly out in the libraries and things and i was just grateful that it was an ensuite and then for third year <laughs> as many of you know third year i hated living out i had to rent privately because college didn't provide accommodation but i just had a really horrible experience with my housemates and i, I just didn't like it and in the end i had to actually move back into college right at the very end of third year because it was too much for me i just couldn't handle it i really didn't like it living out problems with housemates i hated having to cycle back in the dark i hated that we were so far away from town it was quite nice sometimes but also my room in third year was the smallest in the house but it did have a double bed but that took up most of the room and i had no desk 
desk in my room at all so I really hated it because when I was at home there's a desk downstairs but I couldn't really work at home so I really didn't like that it was also just a lot more expensive living out in a house because the lease is usually 10 to 12 months and it's just so so expensive in Oxford like, unbelievably expensive so much more than college accommodation because although college accommodation if you break it down per week is really expensive it's only for nine weeks every term not cheap but a lot cheaper than you would be paying for somewhere for example in london or somewhere else given that most of the rooms in college that i had were en suites you get a cleaner come in every single week who does all your bins but yeah overall yeah third year no did not like it at all it was really really bad but you know you, you live and you learn and i'm glad that i learned those lessons and grew as a person through those experiences okay next topic is social life fresh week to start off with honestly it's looking back it's so so superficial there's this whole thing with freshers week where everyone expects freshers week to be absolutely amazing and it's where you have such a good time you're clubbing every single day and you're getting drunk and you're doing so many cool fun things and meeting all these new people and while that might be the case for some people enjoying yourself getting completely drunk and off your face that honestly is not the case for the majority of people i'd say it's just really funny looking back because the friends i made in freshers week i only talked to i think a couple of them the people you meet in freshers week are not gonna be your best friends and you shouldn't expect them to be some people have talked and asked me about racial discrimination at oxford and i would say that in my experience freshers week is the very first time that i experienced it i was going around meeting other people in the freshers tent at new college and i did feel as though some people when they looked at me and spoke to me they didn't really see me for me i felt as though they couldn't look past the fact that i am chinese and I could tell that they weren't really that keen to get to know me or to spend time with me whereas with their white counterparts they were being really enthusiastic about things I don't know if that's because they are awkward and they've never really been around people of colour or whatever reason it is it did make me feel really self-conscious and I didn't like it I didn't like the fact that I thought I was being judged by the way I look rather than who I am and then college social life is very active at new college a lot of people in my year lots of friendship groups formed from my personal experience I I was always on the periphery of a big friendship group. I never had like a, a friendship group at new college. My friends were always dotted around and I don't know if that's because it's me, it's my personality or whether it's because I didn't really click enough with the people at my college in my year. I found that I clicked more with people in the year above me and I don't know if that's because I had taken a gap year because I, I definitely remember the first day of freshers week when I first arrived at Oxford in new college. I looked around and I definitely felt as though a lot of people were still really immature. Very typical, they're just fresh out of school and they still have that kind of school mentality of drama and gossip and just that kind of thing and I think having taking a whole year out and being quite mature for my age anyway I did definitely feel as if I didn't really click with many people because there is that naivety sometimes it doesn't make a difference but I felt as though it did with quite a few people I clicked more with people in the year above me and I did kind of have like a mini friendship group there was two of us from my year and then four or five from the year above I kind of mainly was in that friendship group if you could say that I had a friendship group it was that didn't really have a friendship group in my own year group it kind of used to make me upset if I'm going to be completely honest with you I did kind of feel left out at times but then part of me just thought you know I've got my friends I made friends from different colleges and through different societies and they were all dotted around Oxford they just weren't in my college in my year and it wasn't like one set friendship group I had lots of really close friends who I knew I could really wholeheartedly trust and rely on and really enjoy spending time with it just wasn't a friendship group and that is okay and it is the norm and I think it needs to be normalized more because there is that whole societal expectation that you go to university and you have this massive friendship group and I think for the majority of people that just isn't the case so my camera battery died I took a break had dinner lighting might be different position might be different but it's probably because I was speaking for such a long time let's move on to clubs societies and sports in my first year at university I signed up to the Oxford Law Society to become a member you have to pay for that but it's well worth the membership fee second term and third term I applied to be on the target schools committee target schools is a society that gives tours and free Q&A sessions and workshops to students from disadvantaged schools and backgrounds who are looking to apply for Oxford and I applied to be the day officer 
on their committee which meant that I helped organise the days when the schools would come and visit Oxford and liaise with the different colleges to make sure they had enough volunteers to do the college tours and to make sure that there were enough people to help with the Q&A sessions and then I had to deliver several Q&A sessions myself. It was just really nice being on the committee and I really wanted to get involved with access when I first arrived at Oxford probably because I am from the non-stereotypical type of Oxford student. I come from a state comprehensive school so that was definitely really important to me and at New College I also got involved with access work. I volunteered fairly regularly to give tours of college and to have lunch with students and then answer their questions because I again I really wanted to get involved with that and kind of give back to the community. I also applied to be on the Oxford Student Union's Campaign for Racial Awareness and Equality Committee. I was their publicity officer and I was publicising all of the events. That commitment was every week we had a one to two hour committee meeting and we talked about all the different things that the student union were working on and all the events and things we could do to reach out to actual students. And in my first year I also got involved with New College Netball. That was really nice because I got to bond more with the second years and a couple of third years who also trained with us and the training was about once a week. It was nice to be involved with Netball Cuppers which was a an intercollegiate competition between all the different netball teams from the different colleges. I didn't continue netball to my second year or my third year but it was nice to be involved with in first year. And then in second year I ran for the New College JCR committee which is the, the jump right wearing right now. I ran to be the ethnic minorities officer on the committee. The committee is essentially just like an undergraduate kind of school council. Really nice to be involved with that. I created BME families. The freshers who come to new college would be assigned second year parents who wanted to be involved with the system. I organised a couple of events just for the BME families where we'd go out for a meal or would have a formal together so that was quite nice and I also held fortnightly ethnic minorities where any person of colour from New College can come and chat and there'd be lots of free food and then I also organised other various events in college. Although second year that was a big year for me when I had my first set of university exams, I also applied to be on the Law Society Committee in my second term of second year which probably wasn't the best idea because my exams were that term but I don't regret joining the committee. I had so many friends on the committee already. The committee just seemed to have so much fun. They seemed like they had a bundle of laughs and it was really fun being on the committee. I made some of my closest friends through the Law Society and it was just a really great time. I was on the general committee. Then I ran to be treasurer, which is an executive committee role, which was a really big job. It had a really big, large five-figure budget. I had to organize one of the balls because the Law Society have termly balls which was so stressful but it was so worth it and I just really loved being on the executive committee. I loved being treasurer. It was completely different, not something I'd done before and I learned lots of different skills. I had to do VAT return. It was, yeah, it was just really fun and I loved it and I made a lot of really, really good friends. First term of third year, I also applied to be on the Oxford Women in Business Society committee. I was the development officer, so essentially forging relationships with alumni who had graduated but were previous members of the Oxford Women in Business Society. It was really nice because the committee was all women, all women who were interested in business and wanted to grow and learn from each other. I really wish I'd got involved with them earlier because some of the girls were just really nice. I just wish I had been on the committee longer and really got to know more of the people. But because third year, I took on way too much stuff. Stuff. Honestly, it was insane the amount of things I was doing. I just I didn't have the time I just couldn't do it So I didn't I didn't apply to stay on the committee for the following two terms of my third year because I was doing way too much In third year as well because third year for me was my penultimate year at university I really wanted to make the most of Oxford before I entered my final year where I knew I'd have to buckle down and I hadn't really got involved with any other university sports I wanted to be involved in a university sport and to possibly be on a team if I could. So in the beginning of my third year, I went along to the Oxford University dance sport team trials, the beginners team trials. Dance sport is ballroom and Latin dancing. I'd never done it before. I went along to the trial, I think it was about two or three hours. So it was a very big time commitment. Went along for the trial, didn't think that I would make the team, but I somehow made the team. It was a really, really big, long time commitment. It was a big money commitment because the training schedule for the beginners team was 
eight hours per week. We had two three hour sessions on Tuesday and Thursday where we would have a ballroom class for three hours and then a Latin class for three hours and we'd learn the different dances. And then two hours on the Sunday. It wasn't compulsory, but it was highly encouraged and recommended that you go along to the two hour practice session they had in the, in the studio. Very big time commitment. And it was definitely hard because at the very beginning, I wasn't partnered with anyone and I didn't have a partner. So I was going along to these sessions for you know, at minimum six hours per week. Didn't have a partner, but I was learning the moves for the follower and yeah it was really hard. Did find a partner, we practiced a lot, we got to go to the competitions, I got to dance in Blackpool. It was really really nice, it was a good experience and although I'm not that great <laughs> at dancing it was just so nice to learn a new skill and I just really enjoyed it. I kind of I hope to get back into it or do a couple more classes in the future at some point but I did, it was just so different and I did really enjoy myself. It was very expensive though. We did have to pay subs, which were really quite expensive. They were quite high. And then I also had to buy my own pair of Latin shoes, which were about 80 pounds or 90 pounds. But I would say some colleges offer a sports and cultural award. So I, I applied for those when I was part of the beginners team and I got half of it subsidized. That's it on the club societies and sports side of things that I got involved with. I think societies, honestly, that's where I made the majority of my friends from Oxford, the ones that I still stay in contact with and I know are gonna keep for life. They were honestly made through societies. The societies are just so fun, they're just so nice. It's nice to have that kind of community that's outside of college and outside of your academic life at Oxford. It's definitely, I would really recommend it, getting involved with societies that you're interested in as early as possible. Third year, on top of doing those societies and sports, I took intensive Italian classes for a whole year. That was also a big time commitment, that was three hours per week. I did those at the Language Centre in Oxford, which is a really, really, really good resource. And in my first and second year, it was really cheap at the Language Centre. It was about £38 per term for two hours per week. So that was for 16 hours, it was £38, which was really, really good value for money. But in my third year, when I was looking up to sign up to the intensive Italian course, they had du more than doubled their prices online in the language center. I mean, I think that might be because of Brexit, who knows, but yeah, they really, really increased. So the intensive course was now double what it was before in the past. The intensive course costs 400 pounds, but you do three hours a week for the whole year and you get a certificate and you do an assessment and presentation and everything. So it's like more intense, whereas the other ones, which are only two hours a week commitment, are le le they're lower commitment and they're less intense. And that was really fun. Got to learn Italian, it's a beautiful language, but at the same time, with anything that you learn, if you don't actually stick at it and follow through with it and keep up with it and learn as you go along and test yourself constantly, you kind of lose it or you don't really learn that much. And because third year was just such a busy, hectic, traumatizing, period of my whole life, like I really didn't like third year, most of it, I didn't really keep up with it. So although I learned some basic Italian, it's not as good as it could have been if I had really taken those intensive classes seriously. But I mean, it's not something that I could have controlled at the time because I had a lot of personal stuff going on as well. It also my first time with third year, had a two hour driving class every week, which was again intense, like all these hours I'm not dedicating to doing university work. Yeah, it was really, really tough then maintaining YouTube videos and maintaining a long distance relationship uh, with an eight hour time difference. It was really, really busy in the first time of third year. But I really enjoyed the first time of third year. I think I really, really enjoyed being that busy. It was hard at times, I was burnt out, but I also loved it. I don't know why, I just, I did love it, but then after first term of third year, that's when things just started getting really bad. Oh no, everything just started getting worse. I just really didn't like it. That was when, yeah, I just really wish third year could be deleted. Okay, moving on to nightlife. I will not lie to you, the nightlife in Oxford is pretty bad. It's pretty shite. I think because it's, it's just, it just becomes an Oxford thing, you just get used to the cheesy music and how bad the clubs are and the fact that everyone at Oxford starts preying at like 9, 9.30 and then go to the club at 10.30 and you kind of get used to the fact that it's so early you get used to the fact that it's bizarre, I found it really weird having come from London that people would leave the club at half 12, 1 to go home but that's kind of the Oxford culture, a lot of people go out really early get home early so they can just wake up and do work in the morning so it was really weird to get used to and it's not the best night out that I've had but I think there's something about the fact that because Oxford's small if you go out on a night out most people will be going out on a particular day you all go out together it might be your whole college or lots of people in your college you go and you just know that you'll see everyone and you'll, there'll, there'll always be people around in the club if you go and I think that's what's quite nice about it that everyone is there making friends which a lot of people have asked me about I have kind of touched upon this in my previous answers Oxford can be a very isolating and lonely place and 
that is something that one of my tutors in my first year said to me and he's, he, he was really good actually he would constantly check up on me make sure that I was doing okay and I think because he understood that Oxford can be you know it's a very intense academic environment but on top of that it can affect you mentally not just because of the workload but because of socializing and because it might be hard to make friends I think Oxford's the kind of place in my experience where if you aren't a certain type of person or you don't fit into certain types of stereotypes or you're at a particular college where you aren't the kind of standard applicant it can be hard to find your people in my experience i found that as much as i love my college i love new college so much i definitely kind of struggled in that sense with making friends because i personally didn't really click that much with the people that were in my college while it, it is quite diverse and there is a high percentage of state school pupils I don't know whether, as I said before, it's because I took a gap year, so I was a year older, I had been really independent travelling the world, or whether it's because it's just the college, which I mentioned before that because it it's so academic, the teaching is so good, does it attract the kind of students who are more hardworking and more dedicated and committed to their degree and their work, which very well might be the case, which is completely fair enough, or maybe it's just lots of different factors and I just didn't really kind of fit in, even though I did make really good friends in the year above. In that sense, yeah, I kind of felt like at least the people in my year I didn't hugely gel with. Like, there were a handful of people that I really got along with, but not a huge amount. And most of my friends, as I said before, were made through societies and clubs all outside of college. I can completely understand why people might be worried about that or think about that a lot. But I think it's also down to the individual. I'm quite a kind of, I guess you could say, like, closed off person. I might not seem that friendly or approachable at first, I don't know. But I'm also kind of closed off or, like, reluctant to want to be vulnerable and like put myself out there so maybe it's also down to me and my type of personality I'm quite independent I remember I used to have some kind of conversations about this with friends who were also at new college about how I got along or clicked with people from outside of college a lot more than I did at new college and why that was the case but it is what it is and I love my college and it gave me really really amazing teaching and a, a cr incredible experience and if I could apply again, I would apply to a new college. I can't think of a different college that I would apply to because the teaching is just outstanding. I mean, there are downsides to it. At the end of the day, everyone finds their people. You always are drawn to the people who are like you. You will always find your people, even if it might not seem like it at first. You will, honestly, I promise you. And then finally, we move on to student support, which quite a lot of people asked about as well. I think Oxford generally is quite good at it. From my own personal experience, some people might disagree. I think our university has one of the highest number of counsellors, qualified counsellors, available to speak to students and have counselling sessions with them. And I never really needed to use it in my first two years. But when things started getting really, really bad in third year, I requested an appointment to speak to them about things because I had a lot of personal things going on. I had lots of things going on with my situation in Oxford. And then I also had my grandma passing away very unexpectedly. So all of that, when it came all at once, was just really too much for me to handle. I requested an appointment. Didn't have to wait too long. I think I only waited about two or three weeks for an appointment. And then from then on, I had a weekly appointment. And I really, really enjoyed my sessions. Like, I really, really like it. And I'm so grateful that they were free of charge. And I continued them when I came back from Rome. I really enjoyed them. They gave me a lot more insight, clarity. Really, really helped with my mental health going to them and speaking to them. So from my personal experience, I think they were, they were great. They were brilliant. I think the university's response to coronavirus, I don't think it was the best. I think they should have responded faster they should have provided more support to students especially international students i think the university didn't really set in place a lot of things and i think it was down to the colleges to make their decisions it wasn't standard university-wide regulations or policies that were created which caused a lot of stress and unnecessary upset i think new college were i think their student support is incredible i honestly think it was it's really good i didn't think this before but in my third year when all of this was going on and my housing situation got to it really 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 got to a head we have the cox and salves and fellows two of them who are in, in charge of student welfare and well-being and they are professors and qualified i had never reached out to them before in the past but i was aware of them because i was a trained peer supporter I reached out, I contacted them, I really didn't know what to do and they were really, really, really good. I had a meeting, after I told them what was going on, they immediately stepped in and said, no, you, you need to move out of that house, you can stay in college, we can't expect you to pay 
double rent. So basically college agreed to waive my rent and I moved back into college free of charge. They knew that it was detrimental if I stayed where I was. That support that I got, the fact that they immediately offered me accommodation, that I was immediately able to move in and that they didn't charge me at all. I think that was really, really great of college and I'm very, very grateful to them because if they hadn't done that, I don't know what I would have done. And then on top of that, what made me really think that my college was really great with student support is that when coronavirus happened, our term had just ended. Some of the finalists were staying in Oxford still and other colleges were sending the students who were planning on staying over Easter at home. New college said to all of us, you don't have a compelling reason to stay, you need to leave. I had a compelling reason because I had to use the libraries to do my thesis research and to finish it and they were completely understanding of that. Then when it started getting worse and it started escalating, they said to all of us that if we leave, we can leave all our stuff in our rooms and they won't charge us, that they will pause our rent and that we won't have to pay anything. So that was brilliant of them to even offer that and that they'd give us a refund for the amount that we'd already paid for but weren't using before the university announced it as a uni-wide policy. A new college said to us, you won't have to pay for accommodation for your summer term because you won't be there because of coronavirus. That was before the university had announced that all colleges would waive accommodation fees. All of that combined, I do think student support is really good at, at New College and I am honestly very grateful to them. I think that's covered most things. I think now I'll probably talk about some of the things I haven't mentioned that are kind of negative things, I, I suppose. I would say that in my experience with classics at New College, the community of students are so, so, so lovely and we're so close-knit, more so than maybe other subjects or other classes at other colleges. Like we have classics initiations and everyone's really close. We have classics barbecue every summer term. We have regular formals. We invite our tutors. There's lots and lots of, lots of different things in the classics community. Very, very, very close-knit. And I, I really liked that and I really appreciated it. But what I didn't know when I applied to New College for Classics is that it's a very Greek focused classics college because the tutors are all more interested in the Greek stuff than Roman stuff. I didn't know that when I applied. I am a, I'm a Latinist, I like the Roman stuff, I did nothing to do with Greek at all during my degree. So that was kind of negative in the sense that most people at New College, the classicists, are more interested in Greece than in Rome so it meant that most of my teaching wasn't really in college when I was being taught for finals and second of all that most of the students because they were more interested in Greek stuff they would all make jokes and things in Greek in ancient Greek or they would like write things on the group chat or in the Facebook group Greek stuff and I just I, I didn't know what it meant well first of all I couldn't read it second of all I didn't know what it meant and third of all even if I could I wouldn't necessarily know the reference because it's probably to do with some Greek text that I don't know about. So I kind of sometimes felt a bit isolated and excluded from that because I couldn't read Greek. Another thing is that New College Classics have a trip every summer. For two weeks they go to Greece, uh, to Evia, and they usually do language work, they read Greek text. I, I've never been able to go on that trip, I've never been invited on that trip. And I understand why, because they, they focus on Greek language. But I've never been given the option to go, even if I wanted to go and like do my own work. So again, that kind of didn't make me feel entirely part of the community, even though, I don't know, it just wasn't that nice to not even be given the option. It didn't really bother me at first, but then afterwards it kind of just felt like I was already feeling a little bit left out and it just kind of didn't help with that. Even though I love the classic community at New College and they've been amazing, we're all so supportive of each other and I really like that. As I said before, I'm a course 2A and I only found out when I arrived, but I was the first 2A in, either the first 2A ever or the first 2A in decades. I didn't know that either, so I definitely wouldn't have applied to New College had I known that before. There weren't many course twos before me at New College and the previous course too was five years above me. There was that kind of thing and the fact that because New College Classics was is, is really good and it's, it's known to be really good and our tutors are amazing, the other students are incredible. They're really good at classics, they're really good at the languages and I never felt like I was good enough and I never felt like I could catch up to them and I never felt as, as though I was kind of equal. Those are the things college-wise that I didn't like, that I think are quite negative, along with the fact that there is a, a lot of emphasis at, in new college placed on academics. And our college does do very well academically. A lot of people graduate with firsts. I remember in my first year, I was basically told that I need to work harder because I wasn't working hard enough. And I was being lazy. I just felt like there was this pressure from the college, the whole college atmosphere. It was very kind of 
academically driven and I don't necessarily think that that was the best atmosphere for me. But having said that though, I loved my time at New College and I did really, really enjoy it and I wouldn't have applied anywhere else. But I think that is because most of my friends and my social life was outside of college and college was just for me having my teaching and my tutorials. I really hope I, I've covered everything I wanted to say. I don't want to be editing the video and thinking, oh, I missed something out. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got to the end and watched this mammoth long video, then thank you thank you for staying this long and i will hopefully see you in my next video bye